Hi, church family. Um, I am sad that we are unable to gather together today, um, but I am thankful that we have the technology to where we can all um, hear the prayer requests and know the announcements, and we all get to read the same scriptures together and just cry out to God on how it is that he wants us to um, what he wants us to do with this information and that he gets to teach us in those these ways as well. Um, I pray that you are all staying somewhere warm and you are safe and out of this weather. Um, I know we live in Iowa and it, sometimes it gets crazy in the winter and this last week seems to be a doozy of a week as far as weather goes. So I pray you are all staying safe. Um, we are not going to have any music this morning, um, just because that is going to be hard to do. I'm filming this here at the Parsonage. Um, so I know in the past a few times I've done hymns that we might not we might all know, but um, I've decided to just forego that for today. Um, so we're going to start out with a few announcements. Um, Care Closet is supposed to be tomorrow, Monday, January 15th, um, but due to the extreme cold temperatures, we are going to cancel that, and we will be putting up an announcement on Facebook about that. Um, as far as other things that are coming up this week, we have youth group on Wednesday, and there's a board meeting on Thursday. Um, it doesn't look like right now, like there's much of a weather concern past Tuesday, um, but if there is concerning weather, then I'll get a hold of um, anybody that needs to be gotten a hold of later this week as in regards to the um, board meeting. So as far as prayer requests go, um, Dan contacted me earlier this week, and his brother, Jeff, is in need of some prayers. He had some high numbers um, this last week in some of the tests that they had run, so they need to go back in and do some more testing. And we are just going to be praying that that was all a mistake or that they figure out what it is pretty quickly and it's easy to take care of. Um, so let's be in prayer, continue to be in prayer for Jeff. Um, also, we need to be in prayer for Teresa Cobb. Um, just continue to remember to keep her and her family in your prayers at this time as they um, face these next steps. And I just um, pray that, that God just continues to work in that situation. So let us pray together. Lord, we just thank you for this beautiful day that you've given to us and, and the many blessings that you've given to us in this day already. We pray, Lord, that you continue to be with these prayer requests that um, maybe we haven't mentioned today that are laying heavy on our hearts, but these ones that we've also mentioned today, we pray, Lord, that you be with Jeff. Um, just continue to guide the doctors in that whole situation, continue to show them what it is that they need to see. And Lord, I pray that you just comfort him, just continue to be, come alongside of him and show him you're right there through everything. And Lord, I pray for Teresa and her family at this time um, and all that they're going through. And Lord, I just, you know, you know exactly what's needed but Lord, I just pray that you that you just step in there and that you help. And Lord, I pray that you just comfort Teresa and just wrap your arms around her and, and show her you're right there with her through all of this, Lord. And Lord, I pray that if there's any ways that we can help, that you just point that out to us, Lord. Lord, I pray that you open up our hearts to what it is that you want us to learn this, this morning, Lord, that you just continue to um, guide us as we look at some of these, these larger pictures um, that you have created in the biblical text. And Lord, I pray that you just continue to be with us and guide us through this, Lord. Lord, I pray that you just be with each and every one of us. Just continue to show us what it is that you want us to learn. 
Lord, we just love you, and we give you all the praise. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as I said last week, um, this, uh, this la these next, like, an hour down to five, five weeks, we're going to be talking about some of these basic concepts of Christianity. Um, I hope we can do this in a way that is helpful for maybe those that um, aren't Christians yet and are questioning it or um, are new Christians or to even help some of some of us that maybe um, have come to the faith a long time ago. I pray that we all learn some new things out of this. Um, so last week we talked about God. God is the creator, he's the protector, he's the master, he's everlasting, he's the one that lifts us up out of the pit, like we've talked about, um, about with David's psalm. Um, so God, if we, if we believe in God, we reflect what we believe about God is kind of the, the main point of last week is that whatever we believe about God, if we believe that God is love, then we reflect love into the world. Um, and so what we believe, what, how we act reflects what we believe about God. Um, if we believe that God created earth and then just left it to be, um, then we might not be willing to take care of creation. Um, if we believe that God is still taking care of creation um, and wants to take care of creation, then we too will take care of God's creation. Um, so last week, as we talked, I, we talked a little bit about the question of why did God create um, and this is one of those fundamental concepts that sometimes we skip right past. Uh, but I have always felt that this is very highly important to um, the foundation of our faith is why are we created? Why was humanity created? Um, so why did God create? I think that's an excellent question. And the biblical text sometimes attempts to answer that. Um, we read in Psalm 148, um, the psalmist writes about creation, and then he says, Let them praise the name of the Lord, for at his command they were created. That's in Psalm 148, verse 5. So the psalmist said, Let them praise the name of the Lord. For at his command, they were created. This is a connection that we were created to praise God. We were created to praise God, to be in relationship with God. God walked with Adam in the Garden of Eden. And in Genesis 1.26, we read, um, and when God created humanity, or Adam, um, he, God said, we read in verses, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26, we read, then God said, let us make mankind in our image and our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created us, the psalmist say, says, to praise God. And we read in Genesis that God creates us to rule over his creation. But as I said, God created Adam or Adam or humanity to be in relationship with us. God would love to be in relationship with us. God would love to walk with you and me in the garden of paradise, in in the garden of Eden, right? 
But because God loves and God is love, we are given a choice in this relationship because if you have a relationship where there's no choice to be in that relationship, then that's not love. And as we talked about last week, God is a perfect gentleman and he's not going to go somewhere where he's not invited to go. So God wants to be in relationship with us, but God gives us that choice to be in relationship with him. We were created to have relationship with God, and we have been given that choice. Um, Paul puts it this way. When he gives his speech and passion speech in, in um, Athens, in Acts chapter 17, um, Paul puts it this way. We're going to read verses 24 through 28 in Acts chapter 17. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history in the boundaries of their land. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. Though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as some of your own poets have said. We are his offspring. Paul, in this passionate speech that he makes in Athens and on the Arpegius, reminds us of a few items, but ones that I really want to focus in on is that God created us and God seeks relationship with us and that God Elohim, the creator God, is not far from any of us at any time. He is the giver of life. The breath within our bodies is there because of him. Paul, in this speech, is addressing false worship in Athens and telling them, um, if you remember, there's there's the uh, monuments that they had created that they they worshipped, and then there was one that was to an unknown God, and Paul was telling them, but you know who God is. You know who God is. Um, Paul was addressing in, in this speech that he, he gave, uh, he's in addressing this this false idol worship, um, the fact that they had created these other monuments and were worshiping them. And he's saying, you've got it all wrong. We weren't created to create other things to worship. We were created to worship the creator. And that's what Paul was telling them. We we're created to worship the creator, not to create other things to worship. Uh, he says that God doesn't need temples built by human hands. God doesn't need us to do anything. Uh, he, but he gives us life and breath in everything within us. He gives that to us. Um, and, and he also says that God did this so that we would seek him and per perhaps reach out for him, um, though he's not far from any of us. That God did this to have a relationship with us because God created us to be in relationship with the creator. God created us to worship the creator and to rule over the creatures. So this brings us to an interesting point, and this is what we're going to get in um, into next Sunday. Um, so I'm not going to get too far into this today. You're going to have kind of a short, um, a short day today. But if we were created 
to create the, or to worship the creator, to allow him to be the master of our life. As we talked about last week, if we allow him to be the master of our lives, what happens in those times when we do create an image to worship instead of worshiping the creator? What happens in those times? And what are we called to do in those times? Let's look deeper into that next Sunday. Um, hopefully we'll be able to all gather together and, and to be in the same building next Sunday. Um, we'll be praying for that. But as we go out this week, let us strive to be a reflection of love into the world around us. Let us strive to show others around us God's love and that we worship God through all of our actions and thoughts and words. May we do that in this upcoming week. Uh, I miss you all. I love you all. Um, pray that you all stay safe this week in this, in this crazy weather um, as we dig out from this last week's weather. So um, I pray that we are all able to gather together next Sunday and be together. Let's close in prayer. Lord, we just thank you for this day you have given to us. We pray, Lord, that you just continue to be with us and guide us. And Lord, I pray that you just continue to um, teach us these lessons. Some of them maybe seem so simple, Lord, but they're so important to, to worshiping you, Lord. Lord, I pray that you just continue to uh, guide us in this lesson. Let it come back to our hearts this week as we go out and, and be with people. And Lord, I pray that you just continue to remind us that we need to be a reflection of your love in your creation and that we need to worship you and that you need to be the master of our lives. Lord, we just love you and we give you all the praise. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We will see you guys next week.